Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. Thank you for joining me in the next video in the Do More with Click Tips and Tricks Edition series. In the last video, I covered some of our open AI connectors for ClickSense and application automation. In this video, I'm going to walk you through our Click Cloud data integration application source connectors. Now, I just created a quick SAS and 60 video on that, so I'm not going to get into too much detail, but what I'm going to do is walk you through a quick example using one of the connectors so you can see how it works. Before we continue, please be sure to visit the Click Learning Portal at learning.click.com for all your personalized and structured learning needs of what Click has to offer. Here you can select from both free and subscription based content, instructor led training, skills assessments, and robust video tutorials. Check out the video tour on the main page to get started. All right, so let's get started. So a few things I would like to mention. Since I'm covering Click Cloud Data Integration, you may or may not have this enabled on your system. If not, you'll have to contact your administrator in your organization to enable it and use it. The other thing I would like to mention is that there are a number of videos on the Click YouTube channel that can help you get started with Click Cloud Data Integration. And then also these connectors that are available in Click Cloud Data Integration may not be available for you just yet. Please note that as of the recording of this video, you may have to contact Click Support or your customer success manager to have these connectors enabled. Okay, so now that you know that, Let's jump right in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a space that I've designated for my projects. And I'm going to go to data connections. And within data connections, I'm going to create a new connection. Now you can see there is data connection, which is our standard sources that are available for click cloud data integration here. And then there's also application connection, which is what I call the cloud sources. And these are the ones that are currently available. I'm not going to go through all of these. The example that I'm going to use in this case is going to be Shopify. But the concept here is pretty much the same. You have to have your API keys, your access tokens, your secrets. Basically, we're using native APIs to connect to these systems to pull in the data elements. Now, it's also important that you understand that there are commercial and paid relationships with some of these vendors as well. So for example, for Twitter, there's different plans. I tried to connect using the free and I could not. It said I had to upgrade the basic. So I really don't know what's going on over there at the moment. So you have to select the gateway. I'm not going to get into what a gateway is. We have videos on that as well. Um, in this case, I have a gateway that has been set up for me. If you're familiar with Click Cloud Data Integration, we talk about data movement gateways, which are ways of securing data behind a firewall. Uh, and there's a number of other benefits about it. I'm not going into that. Just going to select my gateway as part of the process. The shop name in this case is Retro Game Boys. And then my access token, I'm going to paste that in. And I'm going to call this one Shopify RGB Video. And then when you click Create, the next step is to create metadata. Now, remember, this is not a relational database, so we're not issuing SQL to the backend database like we would with uh, traditional um, sources. In this case, we're actually creating a metadata layer. We're using generative AI to infer the relationships and the uh, field structures and all the stuff that we need to do in order to transform and load the targets. So here I'm going to click Create and notice the checkbox is Open Connection Metadata. Okay, and now the next step is to generate metadata or import metadata. So I'm just going to click generate metadata. Now, if I use the data set wildcard selection criteria here, it's going to search everything. But just to keep things simple, I just want my orders table. So I'm just going to search for my data set orders. Okay, there it is. So I'm going to choose orders and add it to my selected data sets and click OK. And we can do a full data scan or quick data scan. Now, quick data scan is based on the sampling and it could be inaccurate 
Full data scan scans the entire data set, but it could take some time to do so. For the video, we're just going to do a quick data scan. And the number of data samples is one for now. And then regarding string column size, you can set it to fixed or based on the data values. We're just going to set it based on data values from now. So now we click generate metadata. Now, depending on the size of your data structure, this could take a few minutes. Okay, so you can see here, it took about four minutes to generate the uh, field structure from the orders data set within Shopify. Now, understand your time is going to vary depending on your data sets and how complex they are. So I would like to point out what this has done is it actually goes through the structure in Shopify for orders. It's not your standard relational database. A lot of the stuff is stored in JSON strings and they're nested. What we created is a flattened field structure, if you will, of all of the data elements. We've actually parsed the billing information, the street information, the order information, whatever information was stored in those structures is now an individual field that can be used within a data transformation. Very important part of this metadata creation process. Okay, so you can see here we have, a, I think it's 173 columns. Okay, so now the metadata is created, we can use it as a data set. So here I'm just gonna click go to home and we're gonna create a new data project. Now, if you remember from my previous videos, a data project is associated with a data target. So we'll create a, a new data project within the Toralo data space. And we're going to call this one Shopify to snow RGB. Now I already have a snowflake environment. I'm just going to click test. You can see it'll test successfully and click create. Now this is going to be a simple onboarding project. I'm not going to be doing any transformation, any data warehouse creation. We have videos on that. I'm going to just onboard data. So we click on board. I'm going to call this one RGB shop on board. Now we're going to use that as the schema that's going to be written to Snowflake. You'll see that in a moment. And I'm going to choose the data connection that I set up. I guess I put it in my personal. Yeah, there it is. Now the data set of the table we've created is already there. So I'm gonna click search for orders. Add that to my selected criteria. I'm not gonna apply any rules or anything crazy like that. And we're just gonna do a quick data replication only. And we're gonna open the RGB shop on board landing task. Cause if you remember, we land the data into a landing schema and then it's then loaded into a storage schema. Now from here, I'm not going to do any transformations, rules, or anything like that like you've seen in the other videos. We're going to keep everything as is, keep it simple. I am going to go to the settings just to show you the uh, schema name is called RGB Shop Onboard Landing. And then I click prepare. So when I click prepare, what's happening right now is it's creating the structure in Snowflake. So what I can do is we'll bring over dBeaver. And we're going to refresh our snowflake. And then once that's done, we should see that structure in the data structure that I'm using called Toralo sample. And there it is. Okay. So we have the orders table structure now available. Now there'll be no data in it. We can just view the table. Okay. There's the table. Okay. Now we're going to prepare the storage asset. Okay, so I'm just going to click the click logo to get back to the pipeline view. And now we're going to prepare the storage task. And then once again, I'm not doing any rules or transformations. I'm just going to click prepare. And if I go to the settings, you can see we'll have something called RGB shop onboard underscore storage. And you can see creating artifacts. Let 
I'll just refresh. And there's RGB shop onboard storage. And there's my views. Okay, now all I got to do is run these tasks. So let's go back. And I'm going to click run on each of these. Okay, so we're doing just a simple data replication from the Shopify e-commerce platform for the orders data. And we're landing it into Snowflake, which in turn then writes it into the storage schema. Now, if we had any changes or incremental loads, that would all automatically be handled, just like we mentioned in previous videos. Okay, so depending on the size of your data set, this might take 5, 10, 15 minutes. It really all depends on the structure and how much data that you're going to be replicating. So in this instance, I'm just going to check my task. And uh, we can see we have one that's completed. Orders is completed. Let's look at the full load status. And we can see it started at 11.29, ended at 11.41. Duration was about 12 minutes and it was 990 orders. So that is for the landing task. Now the next step would be to then load the storage task. So I'm just gonna go back to the pipeline view in the data project. And we're just going to run storage asset task. Now, as that's working, let's go over to dBeaver and I'm gonna reconnect to my Snowflake. Go to Toronto sample. It's already showing the data there, but go to the landing, go to tables, and then view data. And there's the data. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to stop because there's really not much more I can talk about. Um, it's just giving you a quick example of utilizing those new connectors within your Click Cloud data integration jobs. So at this point now I could access Snowflake and perform analytics on this or continue to transform this data uh, to my particular needs. Okay, if you have any questions, please post them where this video is posted. And if you haven't already, please check out the other videos in the Do More With Click Tips and Tricks Edition series. All right, guys, take care.